for our get post path operation, specifically the one where we retrieve one specific post, we do run into a little bit of an issue. So if we go to our postman real quick and uh, send a request to get one post, but in this case, instead of doing one or two, uh, what I want to do is I want you to put in the ID, uh, put in an ID uh, that doesn't exist. So we only have right now um, posts with an ID of one and two. What happens if we send it with a ID of five? You can see what we get back. It says null, right? And I don't like that because it doesn't really give the front end any feedback as to what exactly is happening. Uh, so they don't actually know, you know, they don't know if some kind of error occurred or if we were unable to retrieve this information properly or if there's a server error or if this uh, item doesn't ultimately exist. And so we need a way to accurately tell the front end that, hey, the ID that you're searching for does not actually exist in our database. And the best way to do that is through a method that I'm sure you guys are already a little bit familiar with. So right here, I've got my uh, GitHub page uh, for our course. And uh, you can see it's just GitHub, my username, and then the name of the repo. But if I search for, if I put in a whole bunch of letters afterward, what's going to happen is GitHub is going to look for a repo with this name that doesn't exist. And let's see what happens. It gets a 404. And I'm sure you guys have seen a 404 error at least once before in your life. So that's a specific HTTP status code that represents that this item was not found, that it does not exist. And HTTP status codes are important. We haven't really talked about it in this course up to this point, but there's a lot of different status codes. And uh, if you actually just search for HTTP status code, you can just grab one of the top links. I'm gonna go take a look at the Mozilla one and you'll see all of the different HTTP status codes and you'll see when to use them. Now. Most of the time, you're going to see that we get a 200 response back. That's the default one the Fast API sends. That usually means that everything's good, everything worked. That's why it says OK. However, we do have other ones that we do also commonly use. So anytime you create something, so uh, within your CRUD application for create, anytime you send a post request, usually uh, after you create that entity, you send a 201 back instead of a traditional 200. So there's a lot of HTTP status codes, and we're going to cover all of those in future lectures. But the ones we're interested in is for when we have an error. So if we scroll down, 400 usually means there's some kind of bad error, something happened. And most importantly, we want the 404 not found. So the server cannot find the requested resource. So that's the, exactly what we're looking for. Uh, keep in mind, there's also 500 status codes, which means you know some kind of server error, or server error or server failure. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back to our code. And what we need to do is we need to manipulate the response. Because right now, we're getting a 200 back. We're getting a status code of 200. If I send it, it says null, and then it just sends 200. So that doesn't really give us a good idea as to what's happening. So how do we manipulate the response? Well, we have to, first of all, import the response from Fast API, And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pass it in as a uh, parameter into our path operation function. So I'll just call this, uh, I'll store it in a variable called response. And so once you get access to the response object, we can tweak it however we want. So what I'm going to do is, um, after we search for post, if we didn't find a post, I'm just going to do a quick check. I'm going to say, if not post, right? That means if we didn't find a post, what we're going to do is we're going to set the response. And then we're going to grab a property off a response called status code. So here we can tweak the status code of the response. And I'm going to say, hey, I want this to be a 404. All right, now let's save it. Now, if I hit send, it still says post detail none, but take a look at the status code. It's now updated to 404. And if I change this to an ID that does exist, right, we get the post properly and the status code changes to 200, which means everything is good. So that's one way of doing it. However, there's a slightly better way of doing it. Uh, same concept, um, but instead of hard coding the value or trying to remember it, what we can do is we can import um, from the fast API library, something called status. And so now instead of having to remember what to use, we could just type in status. And then it's going to show you all of the different HTTP codes. Uh, and so now you could just quickly just look through which one ever one sounds the most accurate. So we'll grab the 404. And now you don't need to worry about putting hard coding in a number we can just reference, um, you know, I guess it's an it's probably an enumerator, but I'm not really sure, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then that's all you have to do. So let's test this out again. So 200 good, changes to five, 404 perfect. Um, but the next thing I want to do is 
I don't want to return null. That looks ugly. So instead, I'd like to actually throw an error. So in this case, uh, in this if statement, I'm just going to call a return that only is going to ever run if a uh, post doesn't exist. And we'll just say, uh, in this case, detail, or we'll say message. I'll just say message. F string, and we'll say post with ID. And then we'll pass in what was the ID. And we'll say uh, was not found. All right, and now if we try this, look at that, we get our error, post with ID was not found, and that matches up with the ID that we gave it, and we got our 404. Now this was, uh, this is one solution. However, I think this is a little bit sloppy, and there's a better way of doing it. Uh, instead, what we can do is we can raise, raise an HTTP exception. So this is a built-in exception into Fast API that'll automatically, um, you know, you can pass in what the specific error code you want, as well as the message and so that way you don't have to hard code all of this. Uh, and it just makes everything look a lot simpler. So we'll go to the fast API up here and we're going to import something called HTTP exception. And now we can delete all of this nonsense code. Actually, I'm just going to comment it for now, just so I can reference it in a second. And all we have to say is we'll raise an exception. So we raise HTTP exception. And then we have to pass in two things. So first is the status code. So we'll set the status code to be status dot, and then same thing, right? So far, nothing's really changed. And then here, we'll just pass in the value for detail, which is going to be the message that uh, Fast API automatically responds back with. And I'm going to pass in the same exact F string. And so now we've basically replaced this with just this one line right here, this HTTP exception. I think this looks a little bit nicer. I don't like having to do the set the response uh, and then having to pass in. I don't like having to pass in the response into the path operation function, having to set a property and then having to return my message. We can remove all of this nonsense and I can get rid of all of these comments. And I think this is just a little bit cleaner and moving forward, we're going to be using these HTTP exceptions a lot because all we have to do is just pass in what's the HTTP status code and then the message we want to send back to the user. And then that's what's going to be sent to them. So now, once again, we're going to try this out. And look at that, right? So we got the 404 and we got the message, uh, the detailed message, right? A lot cleaner, a lot simpler. Now, before we move any further and before we wrap up this video, I did mention that anytime we create something, we should send back a 201. So if we go back to our create post and then we'll just create a new post again, we can just send this. We created a new post. Look at the status code that gets sent back. It's got, it gets sent back at 200. And that is wrong. Remember, anytime we create an entity based off of that documentation, we should send a 201. So how exactly do we send, how do we change what the default status code is for a specific path operation? Well, what we can do is we'll go back to our code and let's find our uh, create post. And if you want to change the default status code, uh, what we do is inside the inside the decorator, we'll pass in another option. So we'll say status code here, and then we set this to be status and then whatever our specific status code is. So I want 201, and then that's all you have to do. So now by default, anytime someone uh, sends a request to create posts, we're gonna send a 201 created. So we'll save that and we'll give it another shot. So if I try this again, now we get a 201, perfect. So at this point, I think you guys will have a solid understanding of how to change status codes, whether it's because we're trying to throw an exception or if we want to just change the default status code of a specific path operation.